Men are hypocrites about body count. All right, I'm, I'm willing to fight. Do you think that a guy who desires a woman with a low body count, yet he has a high body count, do you have an issue with that? 100%. Like I said, I think mm. it's your prerogative to find someone who matches your values. I'm highly selective. I want a partner who's also highly selective. I don't think that maps onto body count. Well, I just want to be very clear about this. You're looking for a fair situation, but newsflash, the light world is not fair. That man is going to get up and go through stress every day and face the challenges of the world while you have a pretty cush life. Men have always slept with multiple women. No, they have not. No, they have not. The overwhelming majority of men throughout the history of the world didn't sleep with anyone. The only people they could sleep with were prostitutes. We know this because when we go back and we look at the genetic makeup of people, it appears like most of us come from about 20% of all the men that has ever lived. Yes, 20% of the top, top, top most beautiful men have pretty much always slept with as many people as possible. But society has also changed significantly since then. Dude, I, I, I cannot explain to you how much I, I despise the Red Bull movement, because what the Red Bull movement has done is it has taken something that for the longest time we have viewed as a pretty negative trait, which is the inability to self-regulate, the inability to self-control, right? Which is something that most people who had a good upbringing just had. Your parents taught you about self-control, about the ability to, to stop yourself from giving in to every single desire that you had, right? This is something that's super important as a grown human being. The Red Bull movement is trying to gaslight women into going, well, actually, my lack of self-control is actually a plus. So the fact that I am completely addicted to sex and I can't keep my dick in my pants and I can't promise my dick to only you is actually a good thing. What all you're doing is you're turning your sin into a virtue, but it's fake, it's not real. You are the weak one here. And it's not fair. It's bullshit. I know it hurts. I know it sucks. I know it's not a good thing to say, but it is absolutely true. Sure. My point was in response to his, which is would I have a problem with the asymmetry of wanting a woman with a low body count while having a high one? Mm -hmm. And I would because what I consider a valid reason for preferring a partner with a low body count is that it's better for pair bonding. If you don't have that propensity to seek novelty, you're less likely to stray. People who are more promiscuous, they tend to be more unfair. It's also a complete myth that men with high body counts is just, it doesn't matter, right? So the Red Bull movement wants, to, wants you to believe that a man can have as high a body count as he wants. It has no effect on him being a good man, whereas a woman that has a high body count just automatically makes her a bad woman. But we actually know that that isn't the case. Men with higher body counts tend to have a much harder time actually committing to a relationship. They find it much harder. She just mentioned that they're pair bonding. Pair bonding is that ability to bond with someone else. The higher your body count is, the harder it is for you to bond with someone else, male or female. So men, the only difference here is the, 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 the degree to which so I'm going to use an example here because I can't remember the exact numbers. But let's say, for example, a man can have a body count of up to 20 before it becomes incredibly difficult for that man to pair bond. A woman can have a body count of up to five before it becomes incredibly difficult for her to pair bond. But both have a, a limit. And it's also going to depend from person to person. So on average, we can say that the limit is, say, 20 and five. But both have a limit. If you go over that limit, you now suffer from the exact same thing regardless. It doesn't matter. You are now finding it hard to commit to one person and to be in a relationship with one person. Uh, it's not even that. A relationship is inherently compromised. High body count means you find dating easy. And if you do, you've no incentive to do the hard work as it's easier to just go off to the next one. Avadon, if we're, if we're getting into that debate, I fu fundamentally agree with you. 
You see, the, the problem is relationships are incredibly difficult. Anyone who thinks they're not has never been in a relationship. You have to learn how to live with a completely different human being. And not just live with them, share your entire life with them. They're going to get on your nerves. They're going to say things that trigger the f*** out of you. They're going to make you angry. But they can also, they also have the ability to make you incredibly happy. They also have the ability to make you into a better human being. But in order to get to the happy stuff, in order to get to the good stuff, you oftentimes have to go through a lot of hard stuff. When you just have the ability to walk around and sleep with as many people as you can, you're automatically saying, well, I'm not willing to do the hard stuff. That's why most of these Red Bull guys that you hear don't want a partner. They want an accessory. They want a woman that they can show off to their friends and then she goes back into the kitchen, right? So they don't want to deal with any of the relationship stuff, the hot stuff, the like the actual bullshit. What they want is just come out. My friends want to see you. I want to show you off to my friends. All right, now f off again. Don't cry. Don't scream. Don't argue with me. You'll hear it. The Red Bull guys always say the same thing, right? Uh, men don't like a woman that argues too much. And it's like, wait a second. When you say argue, what are you talking about? Do you just want, because most of the time when they speak, what they want is a girl that just absolutely agrees with everything they say. I would argue that's super boring. I want a girlfriend that has an opinion about stuff. Right? When I say something that's obviously stupid, I don't want it to just go, oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. I want it to actually go, wait, that's stupid. Why are you saying that? Here, here, here. Here's, here's the fact. I want her to have an opinion on her own because I want an actual partner. I don't want someone that just does as I say because that would be boring to me. But if the woman is only a commodity to you, then, of course, no one wants their dog to argue with them. Your dog is your pet. It serves a very specific purpose. If your dog st suddenly started arguing with you, or maybe a dog isn't even the right... Your car, right? No one wants their car to argue with them. If every morning before you went to work, your car had a massive debate with you over whether or not it's willing to drive you to work, you'd buy a new car. You'd be like, dude, this isn't worth my time. I bought you for a very specific purpose, and I'm not being able to do that purpose without you yapping in my ear half the time just because I need you to do the thing that I bought you for. But clearly, um, a lot of these men look at women exactly like they look at cars. Don't argue. That's not why I bought you. <laughs> right? Cars already have massive debate with you. It's called not starting. Yeah, and what do you want to do when you have a car that isn't starting? Do you like that car? Do you want to stick around with that car? No, of course not. You want a new car. Because this one isn't doing the thing that it's supposed to be doing. Faithful. Correct. That the, cuts those, both ways. The studies do not. The studies clearly show that that is far, far more likely the case with women than men. It does when we're talking about virgins. We're talking about two virgins, yes. yes. Sure, let's and, stay on topic. So my point no, was no, that like guys that are seeking topic. virgins, so the reciprocity right, of that would be a guy who's also a virgin. Like you just said, you can cite a study that proves mm -hmm. that when both partners are virgins, the pair bonding is more intense. Mm -hmm. right. Correct. Do you think that... All right, so, dude, how is that guy you not... Know, the, the, the cognitive dissonance that just doesn't exist. If both people are virgins, their ability to pair bond is much higher. Yeah, 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 that's true. But men can sleep with more women before, you know, they have problems pair bonding. No, actually, as it turns out, the studies that you just cited show that that's not true. The second you sleep with one woman, your ability to pair bond with any other woman goes down significantly. So clearly, you're full of shit. They like, clearly. And also, I would like to say, I think the only men that can go around sleeping with as many women as they want are men that have already removed the emotional impact and the emotional um, side of sex. And if you think sex is truly just a physical activity, I think there's already a problem there. What am I looking at here? This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. A winner. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. 
its attempt to make TikTok better. Tick, tack, toe. A winner. A winner. And this is not. The hell is she saying? She's old man. She needs to shut. The I don't know what she's saying. Um, that, that is a zinger. <laughs> <laughs> tic tac toe a winner what the hell are you saying like, what does that mean even tic tac toe what the hell she says it also as if it's so profound like she's just said this incredibly profound thing like in a thousand years from now people are gonna look back on this speech and be like bro this lady was th truly the intellectual juggernaut of her time plato had nothing on this she once said, tic-tac-toe, a winner, a winner. It's like, bro, what? Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it would actually have been more profound if she said, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I would actually have thought, yeah, that's a profound thing to say. Nice. I didn't think she knew that. <laughs> Make sure you always sound brilliant in every nine second you speak. Dick, that's not really the point here, right? The point is the way she said it is like just it doesn't make sense at all. I mean, I'm not talking about the TikTok the uh, band debate. I've already discussed that before. Um, but yeah, just just back to the Red Bull, dude. I have. Uh, I hate the Red Bull movement. I hate the Red Bull movement for so many different reasons. But one of the main ones is that it is not teaching young men how to be good men. It's teaching young men how to be idiots. How to run around and basically ruin their own lives. That's it. Because they are ruining their own lives. A lot of those men are going to realize that the good woman out there, like the truly good woman, the kind of woman that you want to start a family with, she's not going to be okay if you rock up and you go, yeah, I've slept with 300 women. She's not going to be okay with that. <laughs> the whole idea that a good girl is going to tell you, oh, 300 women, man, that's cool. Do you have any idea how much insecurity that's going to create within her? And that, by the way, is oftentimes the thing that I think is most overlooked when it comes to body count. It's insecurity. And even as a man, I'm more than happy to admit that. If I if I meet a girl and I find out that she slept with 30 other guys before me, that creates a lot of insecurity. Right? Because I'm now being compared to 30 other men. Right? My performance is being compared to 30 other guys. And whether that's done... Uh, consciously or subconsciously doesn't matter i'm being compared to them but more importantly i'm basically engaging with them in sex as well because you do bring your partners with you a part of them is always going to be a part of you because you gave yourself to them it's it's unfair it's unfair to yourself and it's unfair to your partner and that's the thing I hate most about the Red Bull movement, because these guys pretend like they, they are these high-value men, when they're really not. The high-value guy is the guy that does a decent, honest job every day of his life, comes home to a wife that he married, that he loves, with children that he adores, and he's a good man. That's a high-value guy. This dude that clearly hasn't heard about a bottom or a top uh button on his shirts before there's no high value here what what is the value that you're actually providing to society except for like really stupid life lessons <sighs> high value man who, who, wait who the fuck looks at sneaker and goes this is a high value guy in their minds they are high value I, I I wouldn't even say that they're grifters um, because a grifter tends to be someone that says stuff that they themselves do not believe, right? And they're only doing it for the fame or for the um, 
you know, for, for the recognition thereof, the money that they can make from it. I do believe that these guys actually believe this. They, they actively believe the bullshit that they're spouting. They, they just don't realize how wrong they are in spouting this bullshit. Did I, I recognize, like, Trying to think, how do I say this? This is a thought that came to me this morning while I was busy getting ready. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how to phrase it yet. I, I'm still trying to work on the phrasing of this thought. So forgive me if the phrasing doesn't come out. Like, I'm still thinking through it, right? I'm still working through the thought process here. But one of the biggest mistakes that feminism made, in my opinion, is it told women that they are equal to men. When that could not be further from the truth. Because they're not equal to men. Throughout the history of society, women have never been equal to men. They have always been more than men. There is a reason why the men went out behind the gates to die, to give their own lives so that the women could be safe. You don't do that for someone that is below you. If you truly viewed women as just a commodity to be bought and sold, when the barbarians arrive at your gate, you go, yeah, here you go, you can have 20 of them, just leave us, leave us alone. They didn't do that. They stood outside the gates and they killed themselves to ensure that their women would be safe. And I, I asked myself, what, why? why? Why do we do this? What's the, what's the reason for this? And I, I think, I think it's something like inside a woman for a man, a straight man specifically, inside her lies your only ever chance at immortality. Her body is the only thing that can ever grant immortality to you. Without her, you are a genetic dead end. Without a woman, a man is genetically dead. There is nothing that continues once he's gone. The woman is the only thing that allows him his genes to move forward. His entire purpose is locked up within her. Right? And now we're talking very sort of biologically biological level here we obviously add other things on top of that a woman offers a lot more to a man than just the ability to have children there's there's a whole psychological aspect to this but if you break it down to its most biological fact like the biological level of it without her you have no immortality there's nothing in your future without her so defending her serving her becomes almost the, the pinnacle and the reason for your existence. And you serve her by being strong. By being strong enough to defend her against the world. And in return, she serves you. So it is sort of like this two fractured and broken individuals coming together to serve each other, to make each other better. It's just, like I said, the theory is not yet well thought through, and there's a lot of things that still I still need to contend with. But it is something that makes it make sense as to why we've always valued women the way that we do. And I know people like to pretend, oh, we never valued women. That, that is simply not the, the history of humanity proves that that isn't true. Because if we truly didn't value women, we wouldn't have died for them. If we truly didn't value women, we wouldn't have an unspoken rule that says women and children first. That is an unspoken rule 
in every single tragic disaster moment ever. When there's a disaster and shit has gone wrong, what do we say? Women and children first. Why? Because we value them more than we value our own lives. And considering the fact that as a living species, living is the thing that we want most, that is, like, think about that sacrifice. Everything in your biology, everything in your existence wants you to live. And yet, for this one being, this one thing, you're willing to betray all of that and say, I'll die so that you may live. 